Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. This rundown is dedicated to our buddy Chris Lorman, who's one of our most recent EPN sponsors. Thank you for your support. This rundown is all yours. It's finally here. We can all start nitpicking the trailer for Disney's latest Star Wars adventure. The first teaser trailer for Solo, A Star Wars Story debuted last night during the Super Bowl with the full extended trailer following this morning on Good Morning America. The film stars Alden Ehrenreich as a younger version of the galaxy's favorite scoundrel, chronicling his early years as an Imperial pilot turned criminal smuggler. The film will also feature Han's furry companion Chewbacca, Donald Glover as the smooth Lando Calrissian, a more polished and pristine version of the Millennium Falcon, new characters played by Amelia Clark and Woody Harrelson, and because it's a Star Wars movie, funny robots, and cartoon aliens. Fans have been very anxious to see the movie given all the behind-the-scenes trouble that we've already talked about a million times. What's that? Disney abruptly fired original directors Phil Lord and Chris Miller near the end of filming, replacing them with veteran filmmaker Ron Howard, who was rumored to have reshot significant portions of the movie. <laughs> Yes. All of this has made fans very anxious, and the success or failure of the movie will likely hinder on Aaron Reich's performance. And what's probably a tongue-in-cheek reference to the production problems, the full trailer even has this line that seems pretty self-aware. Thought we were in trouble there for a second, but it's fine. We're fine. So what do you think? Is the movie in trouble, or is it fine? Give us your thoughts in the comments below. Solo will fly into theaters on May 25th. And if you think it's a bit weird to release a trailer a few mere months before a movie comes out, how about a trailer and the movie on the same day? Last night during the Super Bowl, Paramount Pictures and Netflix released the first trailer for their new Cloverfield movie and then released the film itself on Netflix a few hours later. It's called The Cloverfield Paradox and sees a group of scientists on an orbital space station struggle for survival after their experiments go horribly wrong. The movie was actually made with a different title, The God Particle, and was only branded a Cloverfield movie during post-production. A similar change was made for the last movie, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Unlike that film, however, the new Cloverfield Paradox has had a much more troubled history. It was a originally supposed to be released in theaters a few weeks ago before Paramount pulled it at the last minute amidst rumors that they were having major problems. It turns out that this was probably true because the final product is getting terrible reviews, so it's easy to see why Paramount didn't feel confident enough to give it a full theatrical release. Even if it's a failure, we will likely be seeing more big movies like this skip theaters and go straight to online platforms. Netflix has vowed to take on movie theaters, similar to how they and other streaming services have already started winning the battle against traditional television networks, and with film attendance dwindling in North America, they could win this battle sooner than you might think. Netflix is teaming up with Paramount to release another new science fiction movie, Annihilation, from Ex Machina director Alex Garland. Hopefully that one will be a lot better. Star Wars and Cloverfield weren't the only big movies shown off during the Super Bowl. The trailer for the new Mission Impossible movie starring Tom Cruise got its debut, showing off the new plot that sees Ethan Hunt and his team going rogue in order to stop an international criminal organization, which sounds pretty similar to all the other Mission Impossible movies. That's the job. The new film also includes Superman himself, Henry Cavill, sporting the same mustache that was digitally removed in the Justice League reshoots. The film hits theaters July 27th. If Tom Cruise dangling outside a helicopter isn't enough, The Rock is dangling outside a building in the new action movie Skyscraper. He plays an amputee war veteran who now works as a security guard in the world's tallest building, but when a group of terrorists seize control, it's up to him to stop them and save his family. It sounds suspiciously similar to the first Die Hard movie, only substituting the missing shoes for a missing leg. The hell do I know anyway? Skyscraper comes out July 13th. Marvel showed off a brief teaser trailer for Avengers Infinity War, offering a new look at how the heroes will unite to save the world from the villainous Thanos. A full trailer will likely be attached to Marvel's latest film, Black Panther, which hits theaters next week. Infinity War arrives May 4th, and the next, next Avengers movie is already filming. Finally, the new dinosaur movie, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, debuted new footage that shows off a more scary and horror-centric tone. It also looks like the movie will have plenty of action, and given that the last one overperformed to make $1.6 billion worldwide, Universal is pulling out all the stops. It arrives June 12th. Yeah. It's the end of an era at Sony because CEO Kaz Hurai is stepping down. Harai has announced that he'll be stepping down from his current position in April, but will stay on at the company as a chairman. Harai headed Sony's games division, Sony Computer Entertainment, and when he took over as CEO of the entire corporation in 2012, he oversaw the creation and launch of the PlayStation 4, which helped return Sony to the top of the gaming market. His replacement has yet to be named. Western gamers are going to have to wait a little longer to play the latest Yakuza game. 
Yakuza 6, which was supposed to make its debut in North America and Europe next month, has been delayed and will now arrive on April 20th. This isn't to polish anything on the actual game because it's already been out in Japan for more than a year. Publisher Sega says that the delay is a business decision and they need more time to get things ready for launch. Yakuza fans are used to this sort of thing. The franchise is known for taking a notoriously long time for each game to go west, with some titles taking as long as two years. The good news is that you'll be able to try out Yakuza 6 a little before launch because a free demo will hit the PS4 on February 27th. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds might be getting a little more honest. Developer Bluehole has announced that their new anti-cheating measures will finally take effect in the PC version of the game this week. They haven't said exactly when they'll go live, but expect to roll out soon. The new anti-cheating measures basically block unauthorized third-party programs from accessing the game, which means cheaters won't be able to transform game files and alter the gameplay to give them an unfair advantage. Bluehole says that some legitimate programs, like ones that enhance the graphics, might go offline as well when the new software rolls out, but they'll work to get those programs back up and running as soon as possible. One downside is that Bluehole is also disabling Steam family sharing in the game. Family sharing currently allows different Steam accounts in the same household to access the same copy of a game, but Bluehole says that the feature has too many vulnerabilities that have been exploited by hackers, so it will go offline when the new changes take effect. Cheating is always a problem in online games, especially ones with as many players as Battlegrounds. Bluehole banned more than a million suspected cheaters last month alone. That wraps us up for The Rundown. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again tomorrow with a brand new episode for you. In the meantime, check out some of the other content that we've been making. And if you dig it, hit subscribe, that little bell, and if you're so inclined, that sponsorship button too.